Okay. Well, it's a tough place. Mm -hmm. I don't like that area. Yeah. Okay, so let's continue from where we left off last time. And we're talking about partial tears. Jason? All right, so it looks like we're looking at the supraspinatus tendon. Um, is there a interstitial footprint tear? So we can see a little bit of signal right in through here. And uh, this was a uh, partial tear uh, right at the, in the following oh, the distant muscle, junction. right at the okay. muscle tendinous junction. These aren't that common. That's, Go ahead. Uh, that's uh, intramuscular tear, isn't that, John? Right, it's right in the distal end of the muscle, right next to the musculotendinous junction. These aren't yeah. common in the shoulder, but they can be seen in, in athletes. Usually the muscle tear is a little bit more proximal than that. And as all you know, you guys know, most of the tears we see involve the tendon. Okay. Eliora. Um, there's nothing to do for those tears. Yeah. TLC. Uh, okay. Supraspinatus tendon. I see some articular surface uh, fraying, I want to call it. Okay. So uh, right in through there. Okay, here's another cut. Well, there's some uh, signal getting closer to the myotendinous junction near the articular surface. Um, yeah, on T2, T2 bright. Um, so it could be a small, again, another tear at the myotendinous junction. So I think we're seeing uh, low-grade partial tears of the uh, joint side or inferior surface and a little partial tear right at the musculotendinous junction. This is probably predominantly involving the tendon rather than the muscle like we saw before. Okay. What, uh, what would you suggest we do with this? Well, I don't think a, a surgery would be indicated. That would seem a little too aggressive. So conservative. Uh, what the surgeon really wants to know mm -hmm. is the percentage of the tendon that you think is torn. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's a matter of 50%. Uh, that's kind of like the borderline, whether you think about surgery or, 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 or not, that 50%. Uh, mostly is the chromial site. Uh, well, the the, the, um, the bursal side is where you uh, uh, think about doing the surgery more often than you would uh, the articular side. That's mainly because of the results you get, and, the, and mainly because of pain. It's uh, um, so since this is a the articular side. Um, you, what what do you think the percentage is there? Uh, less less than fifty percent. Less than fifty. I I agree with you. So what would what you think it would do? Uh, just conservative treatment, no surgery. Right. I I think an exercise exercise program would probably be the way to go. On most of these, it's exercise programs. Um, and then you usually you wind up doing surgery down the road. But but uh, conservative treatment is the first thing you try. Mm -hmm. Okay, Robert? Okay, question tear. Uh, just looking at the myotendinous junction, it looks like there's some increased signal there on the uh, coronal view, similar on the axial view. Sagittal, I think there's also probably some increased signal there. That's an arthrogram study. So I think there's probably an articular set of tear there. Okay. So here we can see there's a little bit of a defect 
going to the inferior surface, that defect turns to be right this area here. And on the axial images, it's this area here. And we can see a little bit of a funny artifact over here. What do you think this is? The artifact? Or? Everything. Uh, so I think there's a small tear at the mile tendon junction there. See this? So, and you can see that goes right into where that is. Uh, this was due to arthroscopy. So that in this particular case, remember that, that when you look on the sagittal images, uh, usually the infraspinatus and supraspinatus are pretty much commingled over about uh, a third to a half of their, their space right in through here. But occasionally, this, this is right in the junction between the supra and infraspinatus tendons. And this was an arthroscopic portal that came in through there. Um, the, the supraspinatus and infraspinatus at the attachment, you cannot tell the difference between the two. Uh, they're uh, intermingled. So you have to go about a millimeter or two uh, medially to be able to separate the two. Okay. All right. So we're uh, looking at the infraspinatus here. Um, there's some bursal sided uh, partial tearing. Okay, let's see right in through here. So this is a PD and this is a T2 coronal image. And there we can see this was a young athlete who came in with uh, shoulder pain. Uh, I forgot what the trauma was, but it was af af uh, after athletic activity. And this is a musculotendinous junction strain. And uh, again, this is non-surgical. Okay, 14-year-old acute pain in the supraspinatus. I'm seeing increased signal in the uh, tendon fibers all the way to the foot plate. Uh, I'm not seeing a defect to suggest a tear on the T2. Uh, maybe, then yeah. This is a T1. Right. This is a PD fat set. Right. Right, the T2 would be better to... What did you say, John? Uh, I, I missed that T2. Yeah, uh, I'll bring it back again. Okay, so there's the T2. Yeah, uh, that, that's the one I like to see. Uh, uh, I, that... I think you do too. Yeah. I actually think the T2 non-fat suppressed is a very important image. Most radiologists do not get it. So I don't understand why. Uh, no, we, we grew up on that. Yeah. So what do you think? Well, the T2, I'm not really seeing much of a defect there. Um, yeah, so I'd, I'd call it tendinosis. There's a T2 in the sagittal plane. Uh, yeah, not, not too much. Yeah. This was probably, since it's a 14-year-old, uh, this was probably a, a tendon strain. Uh, probably not old enough to really get uh, degenerative change, but you know they can get degenerative change, degenerative change early in these overhead athletes as teenagers. But this was probably a strain, and uh, it got better with just uh... yeah. With a strain, you kind of get a little fluid and uh, a little edema. Yeah. So um, good. Okay. That, that's a. Like you said, it's a first degree strain. Yeah. All right, so we have a coronal, looks like a PD fat set. Uh, there's increased signal within that supraspinatus tendon, just proximal to the foot plate there. Yep. But it looks like the both surfaces look like they're grossly intact, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, this was tendinosis. It's an intra intra-substance uh, 
yeah. situation there. Right. And uh, some people get a little aggressive on these, John, from what I know. Yeah. And uh, I don't think I would. Yeah, so yeah. a few of these, I, this one didn't go to surgery, but I've seen some others like this that have gone to surgery. And usually the surfaces look pretty normal. In fact, they'll often, uh, I've had a couple of cases, not often, but a couple of cases where uh, I've been called up as medical director and a uh, referring physician has complained that there's a false positive. And you go back and there's a lot of t severe tendinopathy often inside the tendon, but the surfaces are intact so you can't see it at arthroscopy. And these will no. still be symptomatic. But Yeah, what, what, what uh, is done like a Campbell clinic, if they say 80% of degeneration, they may um, arthroscope the patient and, and do a debridement. It's, um, and some may even have to suture the tendons. Uh, so uh, it depends on what kind of tissue they see. Uh, if, if there's 80% of degeneration, they go in and then they do a little debris bond and then leave it alone most times. Yeah, they're not going to do that. Like this. Yeah, so it, it, it's, uh, they're a little aggressive, uh, Campbell. Okay. At, at least that's just my, my, my opinion. That they don't show the Thanks. results and they just talk about it. Thank you. All right. Looks like we have a focal area of tendinosis at the junctional zone of the supraspinatus. Yeah. So there's the so, T2 and here's the PD fat set. Yeah. So, I mean, there's uh, that area is accentuated by the magic angle. Right. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah, but I think it's abnormal. There's a little bit of irregularity here. This patient was arthroscoped, and this was a partial tear. Okay. Uh, inferior surface partial tear. So, uh, and when you window this, you can't really see a black line across here. So if you don't see a black line across there, I'll generally call these partial tears. And this, this was a... Uh, this would be a high grade, greater than 50% thickness. And that's why the patient was uh, arthroscoped. Yeah, that's a surgical case. Uh, 27. It, it, it's, it, it, they're more aggressive, like I said, uh, on the crystal side uh, because of, of recurrence and symptoms. Uh, and less so on an articular side. Thanks. A 27-year-old MLB pitcher increasing ac uh, posterior axillary pain. Uh, so looking at the supraspinatus, looking at the foot plate, we see increased signal. I mean, it could, could be traction cysts okay. in the bone. The tendon itself I think looks okay but so this was at the beginning of the season uh -huh. uh, that that's a foot plate area that's that that's an important area to take care of I don't know where they get the terrorist major and latissimus tear from that the clinic way, way, dis way distal to that yeah well this is that's what they thought clinically uh, yeah, man, but that would be totally not even close to that area. On the MR, the teres major and the latissimus dorsi, which we could see on the on the shoulder study, which is not obviously the, all of the muscles, uh, was was pretty unremarkable. Uh, the patient came back with increasing symptoms a month later at the early part of the season, and this is what it looked like. Mm hmm Yeah, we're seeing more increased signal, maybe fluid coming from um, that, 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 that the arrow is telling you something. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, I'm not seeing the the tendon fibers as as well. Um, it's sure right here. Dirt, Notice that that inferior surface before looked nice and tacked mm -hmm. all the way down to the bone, but at the bone interface, as John was saying, there's the abnormal segment here, clearly abnormal. We see some chronic traction changes, so the patient's had some problems for a while. And then now we see, after pitching during the first part of the season, we have bone edema, and we actually see a tear here with probably a little avulsion injury of the bone itself coming from this area. Mm -hmm. And then now we see extensive partial tearing where it's really breakdown of all of that uh, inferior surface of the uh, supraspinatus tendon over a pretty, pretty large area. But the superficial, I mean, the, the brussel side fibers are still intact, but this was very symptomatic. Uh, so, so this is a, uh, this is probably an early partial tear at this point uh, with probably a, a kind of a fracture at the, at the tendon bone junction. It probably fractured. You got retraction of the inferior fibers and, uh, some uh, degeneration of the anterior, inferior fibers, and then you can see the bone edema. We'll talk in a little bit about the fact that not uncommonly you'll see the, the joint side surface fibers tear and proximally retract. In fact, there's, there's a name for that partial tear, uh, which will come to the laminated. Yeah, uh, uh, right. So we'll, we'll come to that. Okay, Robert? All right. So we have another coronal looking at the supraspinatus. It looks pretty thick and increased in signal. Uh, I don't, don't see a discrete tear. But... Yeah. So, so there we see kind of tendinosis, but okay. there we can see a traction erosion as well on the mm -hmm. bone, John. That, that, that's a, just a, a pull, pull area, uh, yeah. a repetitive uh, traction area. Right. So you're a predator. That, that tenon looks pretty normal to me, other than a, a slight increase in the signal. Yeah. This is what it looks like from the PD fat set. Here yeah, it is on the PD fat set. This is on the T2. So here's what we are having is really a, a chronic traction injury, like John said, at the insertion here. But when now we have really severe tendinopathy in the central part of the tendon. And we can see that on that the joint side surface, uh, we're really losing the, uh, the its its uh, implantation uh, into the uh, to the actual bone. Here it looks like the bone is fine, but we can see that bone is very very edematous there, which we can't see on the T2. And so this is about ready to happen. What happened to the last patient with a lot of uh, a lot of tendinosis there. No, no, yours truly would leave this in a sling for a while uh, and let, let things quiet down and heal. Good. Yep. Uh, so so th these uh, these erosions, which we see all the time, especially in the infraspinatus insertion, where uh, I'm not sure, there are very few adults, older adults, that don't have an erosion at the infraspinatus insertion. Uh, these are really due to chronic traction injuries and associated with little partial tears that tend to heal in most people. But if you overuse it too much, they'll go into a full thickness tear. Okay, who's next? All right, 61-year-old dance instructor increasing a shoulder pain one year after a fall. We have infraspinatus, tendinosis, there might be some fraying of the uh, insertion and some pretty prominent traction cysts at the okay. humeral head. So this is 6-8-2014. Here are other images on 6-8-2014. Okay, some moderate grade dorsal surface fraying and yeah. traction uh, cysts at the... Okay. Okay, now here is uh, about eight, about ten months later. All right, we definitely have a enlarging traction cyst there. Um, right, so it's uh, much more aggressive here. Again, we can see it's near the tendon insertion, this area, and a lot more bone edema. 
And this is uh, due to repetitive traction injury. Okay. Okay, 17 year old, new onset shoulder pain. Uh, okay, looking at the supraspinatus, the PD fat side, there's a lot of signal in the distal tendon. Uh, on the T2, I'm seeing tendon fibers go all the way to the foot plate. I'm not seeing a defect there. Um, yeah, maybe it's a little mixed signal there on the articular surface. Okay. I'm not, yeah, I'd say tendinosis, but... Well, now here, the musculotendinous junction should be right around the 12 o'clock position. Remember, uh, let's look for the musculotendinous right. junction. Uh, and the muscle is probably up here, the muscle is coming down to there. So that's in good position. Mm -hmm. But in the inferior part, the musculotendinous junction is way back here. Mm -hmm. So this is a, a partial tear. Uh, and it's called, this special type is called an uh, pasta lesion. Snyder. Uh, from uh, Steve Snyder described this. I think we talked a little bit about this last time. A resident of mine. From the San Fernando Valley. I'm trying to remember what PASTA stands for, and I'm blocking um, it right now. I, have, I wrote it down. A partial articular surface. I could try it, but it would take me too long. Okay. Partial articular surface. Tendon avulsion. Tendon avulsion. There you go. That's what there it is. There you go. You've got it. Yeah. So, uh, uh, so, and I think most orthopedic surgeons are familiar with this terminology, if you want to use it. I usually describe it because half the time I forget PASTA. So I usually do just grab it. That's what happens when you get older. Uh, pasta always reminds me of spaghetti. So uh, I, I, I don't use that. All right. So we have a coronal T1. Uh, looking at the supraspinatus, it looks like there's some increased signal. To, yeah, kind of there. If, uh, yeah, so you guys haven't seen very many T1s because we don't use it anymore. Yep. Here's the PD fat set. Uh, it looks like there's even more signal, kind of almost fluid-like. Although I'd want to see a T2. Uh, there may be some. Yeah. yeah. Again, looks like there's increased signal at that same area. I'd be concerned about a tear. Yeah. So in situations like this, my experience has been that if it's gray like this going to a surface on the T2 and very bright like this on the PD fat set, arthroscopically it's going to be a tear. So this is, uh, and this was a tear uh, roughly in the range of 50%. That's about a three quarters of the Could be. Uh, articular surface. Isn't that, John? Yeah, probably. I said here, thickness is greater than 50%. Operative, so. operative case. So it'd be a, uh, it could be, yeah. And you could see where this, this is kind of a, an early pasta type tear. Yeah, it's certainly more than 50%, so. All right. So. Looking at the supraspinatus tendon, it looks like there's undersurface tearing at the footprint. Uh, actually, no, that looks okay. So this is some signal here. Uh, yeah, some. I mean, on the fat side, it definitely looks like uh, some at least interstitial tearing. It's maybe kind 50%. of funny signal in here, which could be a large part. Of this is probably cartilage here, so maybe that's a tear. Here's what the axial image looks like. Okay, there's a, uh, yeah, like some interstitial right. stuff, right? Yeah. Yeah, so so this was, uh, I agree. this was a major league baseball pitcher. Uh, we call this uh, an interstitial high grade partial tear. Okay. And uh, he went into some physical therapy and then ended up pitching for the rest of the season. And to my knowledge, he never went to surgery. OK, 
Okay, so we have do we have T1 on the left, T2 on the right? Yes. Um, we got the supraspinatus. Well, looking at the T2, we see some signal there at the foot plate. Maybe, well, maybe yeah. bursal surface more, but. And here's the sagittal. Yeah, so uh, I'd be concerned about bursal surface, partial thickness tearing. Maybe more than 50%. Right. So this was called a tear. And uh, this was one of those that I was called up on, and the orthopedic surgeon was furious because he scoped the patient. And there was, that's, uh, not, that's not versal. Yeah, no, that's versal. This is probably interstitial. Yeah. This is probably. Or, uh, in, intratendinous, maybe. Yeah, so it looks like that's probably the bursal surface is probably intact, mm. and this is probably interstitial, but it was not seen by the arthroscope, and so uh, uh, what I I like to do whenever I see a case like this where I I don't think it clearly communicates with the joint space here. Uh, now I I just state that it's this I would say this is a a uh, high grade interstitial tear, which um, a partial tear, uh, but a definite extension to either the bursal side or joint side is not seen. And then uh, they won't be quite so upset if they go in and don't find it. Uh, these these are, 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 can be difficult to see because it is our articular side. And um, if you don't have the patient position in, in a good position, mm -hmm. um, you're, you may miss that area because it's very tight. And, right. Uh, in that area. And the surgeon doesn't want to cause damage, so they're a little afraid to use a, a hook or whatever to try to see what's happening by just probing a little more. But uh, uh, I, I think this is pretty clear that, that this is a tear and um, should be fixed. Thanks, so. uh, I, I think. Well, there, there wasn't much subdel uh, subdeltoid bursal fluid. Is that a good... I don't think there's any in there. Is that a good indicator of a bursal surface tear? If if there is subdeltoid bursal fluid or not not really you know, if you have a full thickness tear you'll usually see uh sub subacromial subdeltoid bursa mm -hmm. if you have a partial tear to the bursal side surface you may or may not okay. if it's strictly interstitial like this you generally don't but then sometimes there'll be enough irritation there where you'll get kind of a bursitis associated with it even if it doesn't extend to the bursal side surface okay. so it's uh not terribly reliable mm -hmm. okay Uh, so we have two coronals, uh, looking at the supraspinatus, there's increased, looks like articular sided signal on the PD fat set, and then this looks like there's some cystic fluid kind of tracking posteriorly or medially. So I like to call these longitudinal tears. These are interstitial tears, which communicate with the joint side surface, and they... Uh, uh, they tend to fill with fluid like this. They can actually become very large. You guys have already probably seen some large uh, intramuscular cysts do this, but these are really uh, partial tears in this location and should be treated as uh, partial tears. Okay, let me just do this. So uh, here's a case where this was on 5-31-2005. The patient had an accident on 8. Oh, the, we'll come to the accident later. The accident won't happen for another six years. So here we can see the bone looks fine. Maybe a little bit of a small interstitial tear of the distal insertional fibers. Uh, this is now... Uh, okay, here's a, the initial one, 2005. Here's one now, a couple of months after the accident. 
And here we can see that there's been a traction cyst that's developed at that, this particular time, and a lot of what looks like degenerative signal here involving the predominantly, this is we're very far posterior here, so this is predominantly the infraspinatus tendon with a lot of tendinosis and this uh, traction cyst that wasn't there before. Uh, and here's just uh, another image showing uh, the the infraspinatus tendon and the traction cyst here uh, at its insertion. And the new bone injury. And then here, this is a follow-up of that case where uh, we can see... So Intramuscular, they don't... What, what, what was that, John? So different things, I guess. Oh, okay. And then here, this is... Now, uh, uh, you know, five year, four years later, and we can see now this is a chronic cyst in this location, and really a chronic partial tear is developed here in the overlying tendon. And here we can see now there's an interstitial tear with fluid tracking uh, more proximally in this location. And uh, uh, this is now a year after that, and we can see now it looks like the healing to a chronic uh, traction cystic change and this chronic uh, interstitial tear. So uh, you will often see them at this stage. Uh, this is just one example where you, we have images before the incident and then up through the incidence to the kind of chronic healed stage. So that's why we call these chronic traction cystic changes, uh, which are due to the traction injuries. What is this maturation of bone injury? Yeah, and then uh, this this is basically the pathophysiology of what occurs here. Yes. Oh, I see the date, so that's 16 and 15. Yes. That, that's like a hundred years ago. <laughs> right. Tyson. Oh, it's a, just another <laughs> longitudinal tear. Okay. All right, this is the CT arthrogram. Um, looks like our arthrogram contrast extends into the substance of the supraspinase to the uh, muscular musculotendinous junction. Uh, I think which means there's at least a partial uh, or like an interstitial tear that communicates with the. So this is the same thing, just seen with CT on the CT arthrogram. We rarely see these, so just it's what you'd expect to see. Okay. Looking at the supraspinatus, we got a T1 on the left, T2 on the right. We have fluid in the supraspinatus muscle. Um, the tendon. Yep. Looks fine, but yeah. for the most part, but a little bit of tendinopathy here on the on the T1, some degenerative disease here. Mm. But this is just uh, I'll show you enough of these so you get sick of them. But this, this is another interstitial tear. You often can't see the actual communication with the joint space, but when you see this this appearance of the fluid extending proximally here. And often it becomes cystic uh, when it gets into the muscle. Uh, these are all interstitial tears, partial tears. Uh, and then the, and there's just the fluid within the muscle that collects within the muscle. All right. Uh, looking at the supraspinatus, it looks like we have some edema within the muscle itself. Um, and then some increased signal kind of articular side of the distal tendon. Uh, okay, this is on 41303. Mm -hmm. uh, patient came back uh, about four years later. This is what it looks like. Uh, now it looks like there's more of a cystic fluid collection there. Uh, so that, that, that's more in the muscle, isn't it? Correct. Yes. Uh, so be concerned about another longitudinal tear. Yeah, so yeah, this just kind of shows you these developing. This is kind of early on. You had a longitudinal tear within the tendon here, a little bit of muscle, uh, fluid uh, 
tracking back to the muscle with some edema within the muscle, which we can see here right around the musculotendinous junction. But over time, that pressure causes uh, tearing of the muscle and cyst formation, which we see here, which is due to the chronic pressure and fluid being pressurized into the muscle. John? Well, I, I was going to say something like that, too. You know, it's, it's an intramuscular, intratendinous area, and uh, you probably would scope this and um, and open it up and debride it wherever the granulation tissue is and sew it back together again okay. and make a fairly normal type of re reconstruction. Uh, there's enough there to put back together. Uh, I hope there's enough tendon to, to sew to, because uh, okay. that's very close to that muscle area. So okay. uh, it's, uh, it's, it's a tough one. All right, so there is a large cyst in the um, muscle belly of the supraspinatus. Why do you call it a cyst? Oh, actually, it's not fluid signal. Yeah, um, this is PD fat set. This is a T2 sagittal. I think this is a T1 and a T2 coronals. So this right, is low so, in signal in all sequences. Yeah. Um, Not, could be some blood, I guess. Um, okay, so this is acute hemorrhage into a chronic partial tear and cyst. I see. Okay. Uh, the other thing they can do this, uh, it would be if they actually injected hyaluronic acid into it, but uh, that would be a, kind of a big mess for hyaluronic acid. So this, I think, was an acute hemorrhagic cyst okay sagittal views um i think we're going to look at the infraspinatus there's some yeah increased signal on the t2 on the right um okay. it looks interstitial there yeah yeah, some increased signal within the, the well, there could be some atrophy in the muscle or or fluid. Yeah, and the PD fat set that looks like fluid yeah. extending into the muscle. So, so these pretty commonly involve the infraspinatus muscle as well. Same partial tear with uh, longi longi partial tear into the joint space and the longitudinal tear back into the muscle. Okay. And, Thirty-seven-year-old male with uh, tear. Uh, looks like there's increased signal on the particular side of the supraspinatus. Well, that's a good question. Is the injury in the supraspinatus or infraspinatus tendons? Um, looks like we're fairly aimed here. Except one scroll. You see, this looks like supraspinatus muscle here, mm -hmm. following the tendon mass, so it should be supraspinatus, right? Right. Okay, but let's follow this tear okay. and see where the fluid goes. Yeah. It looks like it actually tracks immediately into the infraspinatus. Yeah. So just, just remember how anterior the infraspinatus fibers actually go. That's a muscular guy. Yeah. Yeah, so this is kind of where the tear is. Partial tear. Yeah. And so that's really... I'm sorry, sorry. I yeah, that's shouldn't have said that, John. So here's the primary insertion of the supraspinatus. This is the overlap area. We have supraspinatus and infraspinatus, and the infraspinatus is back here. Uh, but it turns out that the fibers that were torn were predominantly infraspinatus fibers, and that's where the muscle tract and the fluid tract. Yeah. 
All right, so uh, I think there is a moderate articular surface footprint there. Okay, and then through here, and this is 32007, right in that area. So you want to look at the T2, right? Yeah. There's the T2. Looks intact. So that's intact. So yeah, I guess it could be, it could either be a very early low-grade partial tear, but more likely, I would call this tendinosis at this point. Okay. But it's not normal tendon. So this is 320.07. If we fast forward a year and a half, this is what it looks like. This is uh, T2 on the right. Um, yeah, it looks like there's a... T2 on the left and a T2 oh, on the left. Sorry. On the left. Radiology, right? Um, yeah, I think it looks like there's a tear that developed within that region. Okay. So, right at the insertional foot plant and then extending a little bit into the tendon. Okay. okay. Twenty-seven-year-old female, softball injury, uh, BD fat set. Uh, we see increased signal in the supraspinatus. Uh, we have some traction cyst at the attachment. Um, yeah, I would call this. Oh, yeah. So this is what I'd be most worried about here. Is I think there's a little partial tear right at the bone interface, mm. and then the big bone erosion there. And tendinosis up there, right? So uh, a lot of injury here, but this would still be considered a low-grade partial tear. All right. So we have a 15-year-old wrestler with shoulder pain. Looking at the supra, there's a little bit of increased signal, and is that an avulsion of the? Yeah, okay. bulging injury there. Bone edema there. Mm -hmm. okay. That was a small foot plate bone avulsion. So, John, what would you do with this? Would you just let it heal? Let it heal. Okay. I, I of course, would use a sling for a couple of weeks. Okay, good. Uh -huh. Uh, and and if I didn't trust the kid, uh, which I probably wouldn't, I'd put him in a swath so they can't get out of the sling. Okay. You'll torture them. All right. Question, supraspinatus tear. So I think there is a near full thickness defect of the bursal side of the supraspinatus uh, Okay, so, right, right. Yeah, so this is one that, that bothered me at one time. Uh, fortunately, somebody else who read it, but I would have read it the same way they did. I feel like the musculotendinous junction is approximately retracted by about a centimeter and a half. This, to me, looks like a full thickness tear. Uh, but when the patient went to surgery, this was normal at surgery. Mm. Uh, uh, but this is one I would still uh, call a complete full thickness tear. And I think this may be one where there's some scarring over here, and when they got, got out there with the arthroscope, they really couldn't get far enough to actually see the tears, what I think uh, occurred uh, in this particular patient. Okay. John? Well, you know, this is a good place to stop. Why don't we stop here? And we'll start up with full thickness tears uh, tomorrow. All right. Thanks. Any questions? See you, John. Are you leaving? Yeah. Well, we'll, well see you tomorrow. See you. Uh,